All right. Types of Judaism and groups, right? And it's good that you started off with the whole notion of Mer Balanes. I never even knew there was a show called Mer Balanes, but uh, whatever. <laughs> come to, come down to Long Island. You can come, you come do it, Long Island. Anyway, go ahead. All right, so one thing all right, that so will make you... you a, what? What, what, what? What's the topic? Uh, well, there are no topics, you know, but I'm just going to start off, I mean, something that hopped into my mind a few hours ago in terms of helping you guys identify different groups and cliques within Judaism. And this is very important in terms about what you wear, the type of kippah you wear, I mean, like, a, like a black kippah and what's called a basruga. Who wears this? And people who wear that, what do they believe, right? Like, you don't want to walk around with like the gay kippah. It, it's true, you know. Trust me, that when the Noid movement came out with the you know rainbow flag, who would have thought that it would be hijacked by uh, your John's friends? Hey, I mean, you're from New York and you're a liberal, so yeah, you know, suck it up. Is. Yeah, right. So it's true. The type of kippa you wear, right? We're starting with the kippa because you know we're going from the top down. In the Jewish world, really tells people what you believe, right? Where you're from. First rabbi, since you called me out. I'm kidding. I don't know about your sexual preference, but uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a happily married married man to a beautiful Brazilian woman. So, uh, so. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. I remember my friend like he showed up in synagogue with like a kippa with a big oh you know Magen David on top, and I'm thinking like oh boy that's a messianic oh, kippa, yeah. right? Because yeah, you have to be like, but it didn't have a fish on it. But most, at least in the Orthodox world, people don't wear kippot with big like stars of David on it. Okay, anything Star of David is like reform going messianic. Right, you gotta be. Know, yeah. Most people don't know there's an actual halacha. I don't know if it appears in the Ramah like this, but I know for sure 100% it appears in Shulchan Aruch like this that one is forbidden from drawing a star or wearing anything with a star on it. Why? Because, because it was worshipped as an idol. And yeah, it was instituted that. You're forbidden to have a star. I mean, a Magen David, the word Magen doesn't mean star. It means shield, right? Star of David, where did that come from? I mean, that, that that's an English thing. You know, Magen David, we don't even know the origin of that, but. Well, like, don't we say in our prayers in, in the Amida, we say the shield of Avraham, no? But right, right. We say, why, we yeah. say. So why is it called the shield of David then? It's not called the shield of David in rabbinic literature because it didn't exist as a religious symbol in rabbinic literature. Now, uh, I know, like, the black Hebrews are like, oh, well, that's a star of Moloch, right? Or the Hebrew roots guys. You know, there's no source for that. For sure, it was found in mosaics in Eretz Israel, like in, in, in Jericho. And, you know, but also a lot of pagan things were found in mosaics and in, in tombs of religious rabbis, like Greek angels. And anyways, nowadays, if you're walking around with, like, a big old Magen David on your kippah, you're messianic. Yeah. I'm trying to help you guys fit in. And this is why, like, if you go to Orthodox synagogues, you're hardly going to find stuff with... Uh, you know, Star of David on it. One, because the rabbi may know the halacha. Two, because it seems like kind of rinky-dinky, just like in an Orthodox shul, you're never going to find people drinking Manischewitz. Trust me, the Messianics are big on Manischewitz. And I love Messianics. I'm just trying to like, just feel young. This could help people who are Messianic be less Messianic, even though they still believe like a Messianic. You know, like I'm trying to help you guys fit in a little. Okay. Jews don't drink Manischewitz unless you're Reform or Messianic. And also, like Orthodox Jews don't buy Triangle K. Unfortunately, I mean, I buy Triangle K. There's nothing. Uh, the head of Triangle K is the guy who was going to do your conversion, John. Yeah, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi. Rabbi, Rabbi. right? Is an Orthodox Jew. He learned in the uh, Merkaz of Rav. He's, I mean, he's a serious Orthodox Jew, right? But that's another thing, you know, because I know there's, there's, uh, you know, when people like for the first time they're invited to a house for shops, they're like, I have to bring a kosher wine, and they'll bring Manischewitz, and the people are, you know, be nice, and I'll take. I'll drink Manischewitz. Why not? Have you guys ever heard of MD2020? You mad dog? Uh, yeah, yeah, I never had it. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Do you know what the MD stands for? It should be NS mad dog because this is nasty shit. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. So there's a kosher wine on the level of Manischewitz called Mug and David. Have you guys heard of it before? Yeah. Negative. Right. So, what well, they own, Mad Dog MD2020, and the MD stands for Mug and David. Oh. Uh, yeah, so MD2020, it's technically kosher, although I'm pretty sure the little bottles don't have a hexer on them, but it comes from the same factory. But Cisco's not kosher, so. so I mean, do they even sell Cisco anymore? I mean, do they even sell Mad Dog 2020 anymore? 
They still oh, sell yeah. Mad Dog. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. what about what about Bacardi? Uh, does Bacardi have to have a Hexer? Bacardi. Or... Well, it depends. Bacardi makes wine coolers now. Bacardi's a rum. So, according to the ruling of Ramosha Feinstein, uh, well, I mean, he kind of said all beers are kosher, but all alcohol is kosher unless it's like sherry, brandy, or anything that has wine in it. So, Bacardi is rum. Right. 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 What if the what if the liquor is not the single malt? But what if it's a, a blend? If it's not blend with wine, cognac, nyack, Hennessy. I mean, that's like uh, you don't like Hennessy. A Hennessy guy? That's Will. I mean, he drinks Hennessy and smokes Newports. You know. You, you know the, the North Korean <laughs> the North Korean dictator loves Hennessy. That's his favorite. Well, there you go, because he rolls with Dennis Rodman. Yeah, there you Hennessy go. Hennessy is not a Spanish guy's drink. It's uh, I don't know what Cubans drink. Oh, well, rum and coke, right? I, I like make yeah, Cuba Libre. Cuba Libre, right. All right. I'm not Cuban. In Colombia, they drink, they drink something called Aguardiente, which is, uh, it's made yeah, of that, anise. That, that's voodoo, isn't it? No, well, no, no. It's no. called like fire water <laughs> or something. Santeria right there. <laughs> yeah, no, Santeros, they, 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 no, rum, rum, you know, they throw it to, uh, in Hialeah, in you know, South Florida, people have these like life size statues, life size of like, you know, St. Lazarus, right? So St. Lazarus is like this guy with two canes and little dogs on around them. There we go, Bacardi! Oh, that's how I roll, baby. <laughs> right there. Nice. <laughs> what's that? So what's that bottle to the right? I can't see that. What's that with the black? That's, 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 that's a, Flor de Caña. It's oh, the drug one. That's also rum. Oh, I want that. Got me some rum. Got me that, some... Uh, Wow, you know this Chiva Rigan? You know this? Uh, well, that's, yeah, yeah, sure. Chivas Rigo is very popular. They had that at uh, uh, Kiddush every week at my temple. Yeah, that's good stuff. And then, uh, anyway, carry on. No, don't carry on. Keep <laughs> going, Will. What do you keep the crack pipe? In the second shelf? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. uh like that, man. Come on, Rabbi. God Israel. forbid. God forbid. Right. You know, Ketoret in Hebrew is like one of the incense, right? Or that the priest would, would burn. You know, so some people say that uh, yeah, it's Mary it was like weed or something. Priest there were smoking weed. All right. Anyways, you know, so types of keepers, right? Stars of David, anything with stars of David, forget about it. For sure, anything with a fish on it, get rid of it. Even if you're messianic. I mean, I'm trying to help you guys here. Black velvet keeper. Right, black velvet keeper because a blue velvet keeper is something else, you know. So, black velvet keeper is the signature of ultra orthodox Judaism. Yeah, right? that's what every, I got. Every Chabadnik, every Litvak, Yeke, pretty much, Chassid yeah. is going to wear a velvet black keeper. So, this means either anti Zionism or non Zionism, but there is a movement called Hardal. Hardal, literally in Hebrew, it means mustard, right? But Hardal is a mixture of the word Haredi and Datilumi, which means ultra-Orthodox, but religious, uh, Zionist. So there's a small group of ultra-Orthodox Jews who happen to be religious Zionists. The Nitkipa, which is the Kippah Sruga, is the Kippah that Zionists wear, that religious Zionists wear. And the bigger the Nitkipa, the more you know, like Zionistic you happen to be, and and religious. For example, like the hilltop settlers will wear like big old, you know, like beanie style keepers, right? Or, Knit keepers, right? Bigger the keeper, smaller the uh, the member. Yeah, but while well, reform guys will wear these little tiny knit keepers that look like a little stamp and they'll sort of clip it on their afro. <laughs> but knit keeper, kippas ruga means Zionist. Now, modern Orthodox, which are typically also with synonymous with Zionists, will wear a black knit keeper. Small. You know, I mean, not too big, oh, like in the middle. You're right. right. Yeah. Now, leather black keeper also means like modern Orthodox. Modern Orthodox, unknown views, right? Who knows? Yeah, they Who usually knows? have those leather. Yeah, they usually have the leather ones. Yeah, you're right. right. Yeah. It could also mean S&M in some weird little sex cult. But... You know that's 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 not for here or there. All right, okay. All right, so we got. I'm like you're familiar with it. You know, I mean, I'm from Miami, man. This is a very <laughs> sexual city. Get down over there, in Miami, yeah. Baseball cap. Baseball cap means I'm a Jew. Yes, I'm covering my hair, but I don't give a crap what you think about me. It's funny. So I remember I was quoting Burl Wine, right? So Burl Wine. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he was like the guy 
the guy who started Torah Audio. I mean, not the website, but just having Torah on audio, like the synagogue. Well, does, doesn't he like uh, do like Jewish history or whatever? Right, right. I mean, he does it now online a little bit, but he has like thousands of cassettes. Synagogues used to build audio rooms just to house his cassettes, and they're amazing. I mean, he's a historian. Right? I and mean, he also has a great little clip on like he's like kind of bashing the Zohar. I remember I put it up on my page once and his people called me to take it down. You know, so he's sort of like trying to keep it under under the wraps. You know, cause as a historian, I remember I put up a, a post on my page once that fanatics don't study history because history is just so eye opening. And it's such a you know religious disinfectant that if you know the origins of things, then that you're not quick to join cults. Most people join you know, stupid movements because they're ignorant, because they don't know. But they'll go to a Mizrahi lecture and they'll just take his word for it. You know, but if you know the background of things, if you know who wrote this book, who wrote that book, or well, this book is unknown, we don't even know who wrote it, you're less likely to drink the Kool-Aid. I was uh, arguing with someone, Rabbi. I, I don't know. I know you're not a big Chabad guy, but uh, they, were, they were telling me they were anti-Chabad and they were saying Chabad was a cult. Would you, would you consider Chabad a cult? Well, cult is just... Any unpopular movement, right? You know, every big religion right. started off as a cult. Not all cults. No, all cult is something else, right? I mean, that's like, like mutilating squirrels and stuff. By the so, classical definition, let's go with. Right. So cult just means like unpopular small movement, right? Jehovah Witnesses are supposedly a cult for Protestants. And, uh, you know, Mormons are a cult, but they're huge. I mean, they got a big group, right? You know, I mean, if it's like that, then I guess Jews are, are a subcult of amongst the monotheistic <laughs> religions. But most people think cults, they think of Jim Jones or something, you know? Right. Yeah, because it's small and unpopular. But nowadays, it's like calling someone, you're an idolater. If you're in the Orthodox world, if, right. if you're here with them, you're not the chorus, you're a min. It's just, it doesn't really mean anything, right? I and mean, people who have called me a cult leader. Right? Well, it's the same uh, picture of the Rebbe on the walls. That is kind of a little weird. Uh, I yeah, I don't know. I mean, Christians have a picture, at least Catholics have a picture of Jesus. And I mean, no one's ever called Catholicism a cult. Nah, I mean, it's touche, I guess. Uh, you're right. You know, right. Or the ladies have pictures of Jesus. The guys have pictures of Mary. But anyways, <laughs> right. So the reason I brought up Burl Wine is uh, I was talking to my friend, Robert Kalakasi. We'd always have these debates when I was living in Virginia. And then he's like, I would call Burl Wine. I'm like, well, Burl Wine holds like this. And he's like, what does Burl Wine know? Like he wears a baseball cap. There's another, uh, Ruf Scheinberg was also a big baseball fan. Also. Yeah, so baseball cap in the Jewish world means I don't give a crap. All right, that's just this is the way it is, you know. Is that why you wear the baseball cap? Because you don't care. But when I started off, well, first, when I started making videos, that so you guys noticed I had long payouts just because I was living in Israel, and it was just like the community I was in. Got rid of those, man. That look, you looked oof, rough in those videos, man. You know, I feel embarrassed that I didn't what looked nice for you, John. I didn't take it tell you sooner, so I apologize. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I was living in in a community. So that was once I was living as a hilltop settler. I lived in Kohava Shachar, which is not a, a real radical yeshiv, but it was like a modern, like modern with the Tilumi settlement. Two, it was a tactic, right? For some reason, people take other people with long beards and peyote seriously when they say something about religion, even though without the beard and without the peyote, people wouldn't take them as seriously, right? I personally like Rabbi Dror as a person. I think he's like such a, he's all heart, right? I'm not saying that I, I agree with, with his whole like, hashkafa, but I don't think people would take him as seriously like if he didn't have those big breasts of payas and that big old pirate Captain Hook beard, right? Captain Caveman beard. The beard does something, the peyote does something. This is a holy man, this and that. I mean, if you would read the sermon that he would say, yeah. or the shior, whether he uttered, it wouldn't be the same that if you saw him speaking, because you're like, oh, this guy, look at look at his, his beard. I mean, that takes courage, right, to walk around like that. I mean, it's not your wife's hair clogging up the sink. You got all these, like, long strands of hair from your... So you thing? would say, Rabbi, that it's not a halacha that a man has a beard? It's not a halacha. It's a halacha that a man can shave the corners of his face, right? But if you're a student, like of oral law, at least, of Torah Shabbat Peh, you would have to acknowledge what all the rabbis acknowledge outside of Chabad. I mean, Chabad is the only group that teaches that you're not allowed to shave at all. Right? And this is something that the Semitic invented. But the halach is that you're allowed to shave with anything other than a razor. 
right? So for many years, people used to use uh, hair remover. Uh, Ramosha Feinstein, I think he allowed the certain electric shavers. Yeah, in terms of being prohibited from destroying the corners of your face or of your beard, it's been understood in halakha to mean shaving, physically shaving with a razor, like a mamish like blade. Like a, like a so knife. let me take this advocate for a second here. Trim your beard. It, yeah, go ahead. But let, well, are we being a little pedantic? I mean, if the Torah is telling us don't shave, I mean, isn't the point is the point of not shaving is to have an actual beard? So you why know, a loophole around it, I guess, would be my question. That's a good question. If you claim to believe in Tor Shabbat as something true, well, then you're allowed to kind of use the loopholes of Tor Shabbat Peh, right? I don't yeah. personally like having a beard, right? Like you have to understand that in the 50s, no one had a beard. In the 60s, no one had a beard. The only people who had a beard were like the Rebbes, the Gadoilim, right? You know, now like every yeshiva bachar has a beard, Right, but back then only the Rosh Hashiva had a beard. You know, like the Rosh Kolo had a beard. But yeah. now, even if you look at the pictures, like of the Lubavitch Rebbe in the '60s, he was the only one wearing a kapota. Like he was the only one wearing a you know like a crushed hat. You know, now it's like a uniform. It's like cosplay every time you go to Seven Seventy. Right, well, everyone's trying to look <laughs> like the Rebbe. Yeah. You know, but in the '60s it, it wasn't like that. In the yeshivas in the '60s, nobody ever wore their tits out. Now everyone wears a tits out and long and look at me. I... But the more we progress in time in terms of heading towards the future, the more primitive we become. Also, but there's a statement in the Talmud, in the Talmud Yerushalmi, that literally says, because I have a video on this, on, on beards. It says that at that time, like the Jews in Eretz Yisrael did not have beards. That it said, look, they would remove it. With 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 like some sort of cream or something, or they would pull it out, but they didn't shave it. But it was considered to be a barbarian to have a beard at that time. Uh, I give the source of my video about beards, but it's in Talmud Yerushalmi. You know, so one shouldn't think that all these guys walked around like Captain Cavemen. Also, if you guys are students of the Rome Hall, and I'm sure you know that you guys who are very into like Kabbalah. You know, Masili Shashar and like the Path of the Just and all this stuff. The Ramchal was known as the beardless one. I mean, he didn't have a beard, right? I mean, he lived in the time of the Vodagon. It's, it's like now you have people walking around with an extra long beard. Now, I understand if you're a Karite, all right, you're taking it literally. It seems, Lehat Chila, that it wants you to have a beard, okay? But if you believe in Torah Shabbat if you believe in the Or Law, that makes an allowance for you not to have a beard, go up to one of these, these ninjas out there, like in a Haredi neighborhood, and say, why do you have a beard when you don't have to have a beard? Right? Why do you wear a long coat when you don't have to wear a long coat? You do it for attention. I mean, you do it because it gets chicks, I guess. I don't know what type of chick you want to you know, keep who's attracted to... Oh, well, that's not true. You know, girls are into like the whole you know, SF, you know, hipster look now with beards and, you know, wrapped with rubber bands and... Uh, that you look like Zendog from Cypress Hill. It's almost like God gives us an out, you know, if you actually study, like you were saying, the oral law, and it, it's almost like God does try to give us an out when we can, you know, you know, give us the benefit of the doubt. And yeah, you look good in your beard, by the way. No, what, what? The problem that I see, though, hold on. The problem that I see, though, is that if you try to like make a change. You know, then you're going to get ostracized because uh, I think there's a lecture that you have with Moshe Ben Chaim where he talks. He actually talks about that, uh, not as far as the beard, but as far as dress. Like um, there's a verse that says that uh, the Israelites dressed in strange garments. And then he says that uh, right next to that, there's a comment uh, where they say what it was is Jews were dressing to look more holy than other people. And that's why God was upset with them. And, and that's a good point. Instead mm -hmm. of your actions showing who you are, it's like, you know, you got to wear this uniform with a hat, you know, black coat, white shirt, you know. It's, well, wasn't, uh, it's nothing, just, nothing, uh, just to play devil's advocate, but isn't that what, what the story of Joseph is all about? With the, with the rainbow coat was to make him feel a little better? Like it was supposed to boost his self-esteem to dress differently like a little holier than everyone wasn't that the whole point or am i mistaken of this of the point of that well, no, I mean, god that... didn't give him that coat i mean his father did and his father favored his father, him yeah. 
right? And the Torah looked looked at that as something negative that one shouldn't favor their kids because you don't want to end up in a pit uh, like Joseph. And devil's advocate, I mean, playa. I mean, you're wearing a black hat and a kapata, you know, like you haven't converted yet. I'm saying, but that is your arena, right? Although, well, I, mean, I mean, I accept it. I don't, I, I, yeah, that, I but mean, I think I, that you look good with a beard, by the way. Right, I've seen I pictures with you, and you're like, I understand it, though. I mean, you kind of have to. Um, if you get into a community like that, you just can't walk around how you want to. Because like, like like my rabbi said, you're going to wind up looking weird. You're the only one that's, you know, walking around like that. Right. Even right. though you're just following the law, right. you look like an outcast. That's true. Yeah, you got to do, we got to do what you got to do. I, do I, you know, I wash my hands for Hamalti. I do three on the right, three on the left. Do you have to do three? I just do it, you know, that's the way it is, you know? Do I have to wear a big black Barcelona? No, I wear it. You know, it's it's the shtick. It's the get up. It's the uh, uniform. Yeah, you know, it's easy to shop like that. I mean, you just have to, like uh, people won't know that you're wearing the same shirt for two weeks straight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're right about the people thinking that you what you say is like meaningful. I can't tell you how many people come up to me and uh, ask me questions of like how to kosher their coffee pot or you know something stupid like that. Like. Well, why, why would I know? <laughs> why? Because I'm scared. <laughs> you know? I'm, Jewish. Yeah. You're like, I'm Amish. That's why I'm dressed like this. What are you crazy? Yeah. I mean, people would take me a lot more seriously than I'll do without a beard. You got to do your own thing, man. Whatever works for you. No, I do my own. Yeah, yeah. That's that's that's, that's me. That's, that's how we do it. All right. So moving forward. Okay. Right. So the baseball cap. Not women. Okay. How a woman covers her hair 